everyone welcome back to the channel of ecoholics so in today's video we are going to learn a very important topic which is known as input output model it's that topic which has came in ies exam a lot number of times it is one of the most important topic in the ge1 paper and yet very easy to approach so when we talk about the syllabus or when we talk about mathematics in broad if you can solve the question of input output model there are going to be less chances of mistake in this and because it is a topic which is occurring again and again in the paper so it's something which you should not miss while you are preparing for your exam so let's just get into the video and learn this method all right so what happens in the input output model in an industry there are number of industries right so one industry is producing some goods so let's see we have two industries let's just start with the two industry case so i have industry number 1 and i have industry number 2 so what is happening is this industry 1 produces let's say x1 goods and this is producing x2 goods out of the x1 goods they are producing a part of these goods are going to industry 2 as input as raw material and a part is going to consumers for final demand now similarly when they are producing x2 a part is going to industry 1 as input again and the other part is going to consumers for final consumption so this is what happens generally in an any economy the industries are kind of interdependent so in the questions of input output model we are mostly asked to find the total output of the industries in the question given to us so maybe we are given the input output uh, matrices the input matrices or we are given the final consumption and we are asked to find the gross output so the questions whichever questions if you will go back and look into the pyqs the questions are revolving around the gross output the total output in just one or another way so understanding how can we find out our total output is very important but the thing is we tend to cram the formula of input output ki theek hai we know this thing let's just cram it and we will be done but sometimes what happen in the questions of input output is they try to revolve the things they try to bring some distinct features to it and in this process we often forget that oh is this formula which we have crammed back in the few days is it really going to work is it really going to give our answer so what we have just to do is we have to understand the procedure so if we can really understand the procedure how we are getting to the output whatever details whatever additional things might come up in the exam you would be able to answer those questions so now you have understood this properly so what we just have to do is let us say you have i industry and you have jth industry so over here x i j represents the output of ith industry going to jth industry as an input so when i say let's say when i'm telling you that okay the first industry or let's say the second industry uses 20% like out of the whole output the second industry is producing 20% part of that they have got through the first industry because first industry is supplying them raw materials so similarly this represents the output of ith industry going to jth as raw material which is equal to aij into xj now why have i multiplied it with xj because i'm saying that okay 10% of the total output of j so aij is the proportion of raw materials used in the output of jth industry so out of the total output of jth industry how much proportion has been taken from ith as an raw material so this is your first equation over here now when i come to the i industry now this is this thing represents xi represents the total output of ith industry so xi now i say 
that the ith industry is producing for raw materials which are just going to j let's say if you just have a two industry case so they are just going to jth industry the another thing which can happen is the ith industry the industry itself can also use their own raw material it is totally possible so i can bring in summation so this summation would do what ki whatever to whatever industries or to whichever industries the input is going it's adding up that over here i can write this thing ki j starts from i and can go till n so it will be a n industry case but the output it is going to raw material side but it is also going to final consumers let us represent their final demand with the variable y i so x i is the total output this represents the output going towards input satisfaction input requirement fulfillment and this is going to the final consumer demand so when an industry will distribute their output as input and as to their consumers their output will be exactly equal to that the amount will be exactly equal to that now what we have to do now if i take this to the other side i'm going to have xi minus summation aij into xj plus yi this is what i'm going to have now tell me because the j is taking values from i what is going to happen there will be a point when it's starting from 1 and it is going till n there will be a point where j will be exactly equal to i so where whenever the j will be exactly equal to i what kind of equation am i going to have i will be having an equation xi minus ai i xi equals to yi this is what i'm going to have like if i try to open the summation so it means when i is equal to 1 and j is equal to 1 then i'm going to have the situation when i is 2 j is 2 then also i'm going to have in situation so what next i have to do with this is i have to write this thing in the matrix formulation so let us let's get to the next slide so we have written down this equation xi minus summation aij x j equals to y i, where j can start from one and can go till n. So I am going to write this thing in the matrix form by giving i and j their values. Now, when i and j both will be equal to one, I would be having x one minus a one one x one. Now. i'm going to i'm writing this for the first industry only so i is the first industry basically so j is going to change so when the first industry is going to send input the his products as input they are going to the second industry so the next entry i'm going to have is minus a12 x2 similarly minus a1n xn like this now when i come to second industry the same way minus a21 x1 1 minus a22 x2 and minus a2 n xn if i follow the same pattern i'm going to have 1 minus a n n xn like this equals to y i so y1 y2 go on till y n like this i just need to write this in the matrix form again so i will be taking out my x1 x2 and xn all i'm going to take them out after this the next step would involve so when i will take x1 x2 and xn out i'm going to be left with minus 1 minus a11 minus 1 a12 minus a13 and till minus a1n Then minus a two one one minus a two two minus a two n goes on till one minus a n n and over here I will be having minus a n one like this and because I have taken them out they would be x one x two till x n equals to y i so y one y two go on till y n. so what is this this is the simple this, these this column vector over here i would say it contains the output of first industry x1 then of second industry x2 then of nth industry xn these are the final demands so i have to find this these would be given let's say what is this 
If you figure this thing out, let's just have a look at one thing over here. So what is happening is I'm saying you, I'm telling you that AIG represents the proportion of output used by another industry as input. So if I want to write A matrix, which is going to be the input coefficient matrix, it tells me the proportion of goods used as input. So A11 represent output of first industry used by first industry itself as an, as an input, right? Similarly, A12 would be representing output of first industry used by second as input. The same way like this. So this is it. If you just try to compare this matrix to the matrix over here, what is the difference? The diagonal elements are just one minus the elements of the A matrix and the off diagonal elements have a negative sign in front of this. So it means if I will be subtracting this A matrix from the identity matrix, I would be getting my matrix given on the next page over here. Because how is identity matrix going to work? It is something like this. So 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, like this. I only will be having 1 on the diagonal elements and off diagonal elements would be equal to 0. So 1 minus A11 will be the same. 0 minus A12 will be minus A12. So you have to take identity matrix also of n by n dimension, right? So it means what has this matrix formulation is giving me. It's giving me I minus A into X equals to Y, where I minus A is the, the matrix which I've got from my input coefficients. X is the output matrix and Y is the final demand matrix. So it involves nothing much further. To solve this, I have now got I minus A x equals to y. So how do we solve a system of linear equations? So to get the value of x, most probably in most of the questions you're going to get to find the value of x. So x is nothing, it is i minus a inverse into y. So we tend to memorize this formula and we try to see, solve each and every question using this formula only. But the problem comes in when the question does not maybe demand the x vector or maybe it's kind of putting some other restrictions into the model which you don't know how you have to include into the input output question. So if you follow the derivation, if you understand this derivation procedure, whatever additional restrictions would be imposed into our question, you can very easily include them into your question. So input output model is that topic, which all of you should never leave if you are preparing for your IES exam, because it has been observed in the PYQs that it is coming again and again every year. And it's also a scoring question for which you can score very easily. If you found this video useful, please like it, share it among your friends, subscribe to the channel. Also, please let us know in the comment section below, do you want videos on other topics which you find out difficult, but you think they are coming in the exam every year. Thank you so much for watching this video.